Alrighty, hi boys and girls. Uh, we are down to the last chapter of Time for Andrew. So how is this one gonna wrap up? We just found out that Andrew did actually live to be an old man. He's 96 now. Here we go, chapter 24. Long before I was ready to say goodbye, Hannah rose to her feet and beckoned to Andrew. We've had enough excitement for one day. It's time to leave. After making sure Aunt Blythe wasn't looking, Andrew pulled a leather bag out of his pocket. She thinks you already have these, he said. They're yours for keeps now. I clasped the marbles to my heart and stared at him through a blur of tears. Come back soon, Andrew. He hugged me so hard he squashed my nose against his bony shoulder. At my age, I can't promise anything, but I'll do my best to see you again. And that's the truth. After all, Hannah and I aren't that far away. With modern cars and highways, Riverview's sight, a sight closer than it used to be. Reluctant to let him go, I looked him in the eye. No matter what happens, I'll always keep you here. I struck my chest with my fist. Right here in my heart, as long as I live. Andrew smiled. I fancy you picked up that pretty notion from Hannah. Hugging me again, he said, I hope your heart lasts as long as mine has, Drew. I want you to have all the time in the world to do whatever you like. I watched him help Hannah into the car and then position himself behind the steering wheel. While Aunt Blythe and I waved goodbye, the big Buick bumped down the driveway, turned right, and vanished in the direction of the river view. Auntie Blythe went inside to check on great-grandfather, but I sat on the front steps and watched the sun sink behind the trees across the highway. A little chill crept across my skin. Summer was almost over. Soon my parents would return and I'd go back to Chicago. There would be no more midnight meetings in the attic, no croquet games with Hannah, no boxing lessons from John, no fights with Edward. Behind me, the door opened and I heard the wheelchair squeak as it rolled through. Haven't changed a bit, either one of them, great-grandfather muttered, coming around here, showing off, laughing like the world's their oyster. When I turned to face him, great-grandfather scowled. What the Sam Hill are you doing here? I thought Hannah took you with her. How long am I going to have to put up with the sight of your ugly face? Aunt Blythe looked at me and sighed apologetically. Her eyes said, what's the use? Great-grandfather wasn't paying attention to either one of us. He stared fixedly at the lawn, his eyes moving back and forth as if he were watching something only he could see. For a moment, I thought I heard laughter. The click of one croquet ball striking another, a dog barking. I stared at the empty yard, trying to see what great-grandfather saw, but nothing shifted, nothing changed. If the Tylers were playing, playing croquet, they were visible to him and him alone. The only dog in sight was Binky, running across the lawn to meet him. I took the stick he carried and threw it as hard as I could. It sailed across the sky and Binky dashed after it. As the dog disappeared into the bushes, I looked up at the attic window and remembered the flash of white I'd seen the day I arrived. My first glimpse of Andrew. Funny to think, I'd been scared. Nothing stirred in the attic now. No one watched. No one waited. Deep in my pocket, I touched the red bullseye. Warm as blood and twice as lucky. The marbles were mine for keeps. They were safe, and so was Andrew. The end. I'm actually going to read um, a little snippet that they have in the back of the book. This is How to Play Ringer. So the game that Andrew and Drew continue to play at midnight. Um, if you want to try it out, this is what you'll need to know. How to Play Ringer. One, draw a circle at least three feet in diameter on a smooth, flat surface. Two, in the center, draw a cross. Lay 13 marbles on it, one in the middle, and three on each arm. These are the targets, sometimes called ducks or miggles. Three, to determine who gets the first turn, you must lag. Draw two lines about a foot apart. One is the lag line. The other is the back line. 
step back 10 paces and draw a pitching line. From here, use an underhanded throw to roll your shooter to, at the lag line. The player whose marble lands closest goes first. If your marble stops at the lag line, you win automatically. But if it crosses the back line, you lose automatically. Note, in ringer, the first player has a distinct advantage. To win, you must knock seven marbles out of the circle. A good player can do this on his first try or her first try. Four, the first player kneels outside the ring and knuckles down to shoot. You must keep at least one knuckle on the ground and you must not move your hand, an offense called whisting. Oh, sorry, not offense, an offense called whisting. Those are two words that look the same, but sound different. Hmm, what kind of literary device is that? Number five, if no marbles leave the circle, you lose your turn. If your shooter is still in the ring, leave it there. That's where you shoot from the next time. If it rolls outside, you can shoot from anywhere on the ring's perimeter. Note, your opponent may knock your shooter out of the ring. If he or she does, you shoot from the place that your marble lands. Six, if you shoot one or more marbles out of the ring, you can try again. Provided your shooter stays inside the ring. If your shooter rolls outside with the other marbles, you keep the ones you hit, but you lose your turn. Seven, to keep your turn, shoot from the place where your shooter stopped. And eight, the first player to knock seven marbles out of the ring wins the game. So if anyone wants to play this, um, this is the setup. So you've got the, the circle, and it was, I believe, three feet in diameter, three something. You'll have to walk, go back to my reading and check, because now I can't even remember. Um, and then the 13 marbles that you're drawing with the cross, three on each arm, one in the middle. Um, if you want to use my directions that I just read to play, you might want to pause after each direction on your first uh, couple tries to do it. Um, there's probably also some great videos out there, but I suggest that if you have marbles already, go ahead and try this out with your, your family members, especially while we're at home. So check it out. And thank you all for being here for my read aloud. This was Time for Andrew by Mary Downing Hahn. Um, Mary Downing Hahn is a great author. She actually writes some different books. Um, some are a little bit more scary, I will say, um, but they do have that element of mystery in them. So definitely check out her books if you enjoyed this one and see if there's other ones out there that are for you. I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to take an AR quiz um, and have a great day. Bye-bye.